Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about the K-means cluster analysis. But even before I demonstrate how to uh, perform K-means cluster, cluster analysis using uh, the Orange software, may I request you to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Segmentation has a wide variety of applications in the business. Firstly, we can use segmentation to segment or group customers based on their shopping habits. Secondly, we can use segmentation techniques to find similar documents. Thirdly, we can also group tweets based on their content. So these are three applications of segmentation. One of the most popular and widely used segmentation techniques is what is called as K-means cluster analysis. I repeat, K-means cluster analysis, which is what I will be demonstrating using the Orange software. Now, there are three important points about K-means cluster analysis. The first point is K-means cluster, cluster analysis works when the data set is large. When you have a large data set, typically greater than 1,000 samples, that's when K-means cluster analysis works best. Secondly, K-means cluster analysis works very well with scale variables. If you have categorical variables, it is advisable not to use K-means cluster analysis. Thirdly, K-means cluster analysis expects the user to specify the optimal number of clusters. So these are the three points that we need to keep in mind before running a K-means cluster algorithm. Now, let me show how K-means cluster analysis works using Orange. Orange is a very user-friendly software. You don't need to keep in mind any codes and such things. This is not a programming software. It is just simply a drag and drop technology. Firstly, let me paint some data. Let me right click and choose the option paint data. I'm going to double click on the paint data. Let me create three groups of points. This is the first set of points that I'm going to create. I'm going to create the next set of points. And finally, I'm going to create the third set of points here. As you can see here, you have the Y axis and the X axis. So effectively, we have two features which will be used as the input for the K-means cluster analysis to identify the groups in the data set. It is quite apparent to the naked eye that there are three groups. But the question is, can we expect K-means cluster analysis to make three groups appropriately for this data set? Let me close this particular window. Right-click, choose K-means widget. I'm going to establish a connection between the paint data and the K-means algorithm. As I said earlier, the x-axis coordinates and the y-axis coordinates will be used as the input features to determine the clusters. Let me open up this dialog box. You have two different options. One is when you are specifying the number of clusters, you can choose the fixed number of clusters. That is, if you are already aware, you can choose either a three cluster solution, or if you feel that a four cluster solution is appropriate for your data set, you can specify the number as four. The second option is interesting because here we can request orange to suggest what is the ideal number of clusters. I'll choose the default three cluster solution. I repeat, I will choose the default three cluster solution. Let me close this. Now we have run the k-means algorithm. To see the quality of our output, what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a scatter plot. You can see here, this is the scatter plot. Let me establish a connection from k-means to the scatter plot. Let me open this up. You can see here, we have the axis x and y, and the color represents the clusters. It's quite interesting that you have k-means cluster analysis has done a good job in identifying the three clusters. If I hover the mouse on the first set, you can see all the green circles. This is cluster number three. And here to the top right-hand side, you have a set of red color circles. 
and this constitutes the second cluster. Finally, I have the third cluster. So this is quite brilliant from k-means cluster analysis. It has successfully identified three clusters, and the grouping looks the grouping looks okay. Now, what we can do is we can just open up the k-means widget once again. Let me bring up the output of the scatter plot. Let me experiment with a two cluster solution. The moment I specify a two cluster solution, you can see the impact of two cluster solution. It has classified these set of points as well as these set of points into one group. So you have all the red circles belong to one group, which is not really appropriate. We can clearly see that it two cluster solution is not appropriate. The idea of experimenting is to see what is the ideal number of clusters? What is the optimal number of clusters? So if we as users are not sure about what is the right number of clusters, you can see k-means cluster analysis misclassifies a lot of data points into the wrong cluster. We've already seen what happens when we specify three. Now this is a lot better. Let me experiment with four cluster solution. You can see here a new cluster is being formed. And this new cluster is being formed from cluster number two itself. K-means cluster analysis has not disturbed cluster number one. It also has not disturbed cluster number three, but the new cluster that is cluster number four is formed by using cluster number two. Let me increase this to five here. Again, what you see is that uh, this particular cluster is not disturbed. To the far right, you have a set of points that is also not disturbed. It is forming three new groups based on the data points at the top left. Now, this kind of an experimental process of determining the optimal number of clusters is good when the sample size is extremely small. My question is, when the sample size becomes extremely large, when the input features are too many, that is when the complexity of the data set increases, how do you find the optimal number of clusters? I can't keep tweaking and experimenting with the fixed number of clusters because this is time consuming and very, very tedious. I'll come back to this question. How do you find the optimal number of clusters? Now, we can ask, we can ask Orange to help us with determining the optimal number of clusters. How does this work? What Orange does as the backend is it simply varies the number of clusters, scores each clustering, and returns the best score. But there's one more important question. How do we score the clusters? This is very, very important. The scoring of the clusters is done using a metric which is called as silhouette score. I repeat, there is a metric which is called as silhouette score, which is used to do the scoring of the clusters. Now, we can choose the second option. So far, I was using the first option. Now I'm going to use the second option. You can see here what Orange does is it reports the silhouette score. Now, silhouette score reports how well each data point on an average fits into the des designated cluster. I repeat, silhouette score reports how well each data point on an average fits into the designated cluster. The higher the silhouette score, the fewer the data points we have where the cluster membership is not clear. I repeat, the higher the score, better is the solution. Lower the silhouette score, poor, poor is the solution. Now, when you experiment with different clusters here, you can see here, Orange suggests that for our data set, three cluster solution is the optimal cluster solution. I repeat, why is it three cluster is the optimal solution? Simply because look at the silhouette score for three, it is 0.87. If you compare it with a two cluster solution, the silhouette score is 0.62. If you compare a three cluster solution with four, it is 0.69. Higher the silhouette score, better is the clustering solution. So this is a simple thumb rule that we can always use to determine what is the optimal number of clusters. It is quite evident 
uh, from this method that a three cluster solution fits our data very, very well. Now, the next thing that we can do is I can add more data points. Let me arrange these panels so that it's very, very easy for you to visualize this. Let me bring up the source data as well. Okay, this is my source data. This is k-means cluster settings. And then I have the output of the scatter plot. So to the left side, you can see the source data. And to the top right hand side, you can see the k-means cluster analysis. And this is the output of the segmentation. Now, what I intend to do is, originally I had only three segments. I'm gonna make more groups to show you how k-means cluster analysis works. I'm also going to show you how the silhouette score varies. So right now we have three clusters. Let me make the four. Let me make the fourth group here. You can see here, the moment I make the fourth group, the silhouette scores basically gets refreshed. And you can see the new group here basically is assigned to the new cluster. Let me make the fifth group here. This is the fifth group that I'm going to make. Scores are getting refreshed. Now, Orange tells me that the five cluster solution is optimal. How do I come to this conclusion? Because look at the silhouette score. The five For the five cluster solution, the silhouette score is 0.78, which is the highest as compared to any segmentation. I'm going to make one more group here. Let this be the sixth group. You can see here, again, the silhouette score basically gets refreshed. For a six cluster solution, the silhouette score is the highest, which is 0.75. And you can see here in the scatter plot, each of these data points go into one of the six groups. So k-means cluster analysis is very, very good in that sense of the word. Secondly, you can use the silhouette score to identify the optimal number of clusters. Now. This brings me to another important idea. Is it possible for k-means cluster analysis to make a mistake? In other words, does k-means cluster analysis have any drawback? Now to illustrate this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the source data. I'm going to clear the source data and I'm going to make a shape in the form of a smiley. Let me make a shape in the form of a smiley. I'm going to then request k-means cluster analysis to make groups out of this. You can see here clearly there are three groups, but when you run a k-means cluster analysis based on the silhouette, see based on the silhouette score, it says that four groups would be optimal. The scatter plot also confirms that. K-means cluster analysis has made four groups. There's the first group, there's the second group, and here you can see the breakdown of the third and the fourth group, which is not really the right solution. We can clearly see from the source data set that there are only three groups, but K-means cluster analysis is misleading us by saying that four groups is optimal. This is the biggest weakness of K-means cluster analysis. So what is the message? What is the learning that we can get from this solution? The first learning is that k-means cluster analysis works best on compact spherical shaped clusters. I repeat, k-means cluster analysis works best on compact spherical shaped clusters. Secondly, k-means cluster analysis fails when the shape of the data points is of a different kind, different from a spherical shape point. So if you don't have spherical shape clusters, k-means cluster analysis fails. So with this, I have come to the end of today's video. In today's video, we saw the working of k-means cluster analysis. K-means cluster analysis forms groups based on distance measure. You can either use Euclid's distance measure or Mahalanobis distance measure or any of the distance measures to make groups. Secondly, k-means cluster analysis works best for large data sets. K-means cluster analysis also works when the data set is compact, 
spherical shaped clusters are given to it. I thank you very much for watching this uh, particular video. In case you have liked this video, I request you to like this particular video. Please subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends and family members. Thank you.